Good morning, this is Larry Phillips again. And today we're going to be looking specifically at a chapter in Jeremiah that I'd mentioned here a while back um, regarding the uh, warning that God gave to Jeremiah regarding the pastors. We uh, are living in a time where there is no moral clarity very little moral clarity and there is really a watered down doctrine being taught out there regarding God's love it's a very uh, fickle kind of love it's uh, a love that's not an eternal love it's an iffy love and it's a love based upon the free will of man not the absolute decree of God and if we have a love that's conditional based upon man's work then that's um, at least a very shaky love in the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah the first verse says woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. You know, so first of all, we have an admonition that what these pastors are doing is they're destroying and scattering the sheep of his pasture. Uh, that's a grievous thing uh, that a pastor can uh, put out information saying this is of the Lord and it's not of the Lord at all. Verse 2, Therefore thus saith the Lord God of Israel against the pastors that feed my people, ye have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doings, saith the Lord. And I will gather the remnant of my flock out of all countries, whither I have driven them and will bring them again to their foals, and they shall be fruitful and increase. You know, we see kind of a, a mixed bag here. We see that even though the pastors are putting out misinformation and false doctrine and everything else, um, God makes it clear through Jeremiah that God's going to gather the remnant of his flock whether I have driven them. So he's sovereign in this whole action. And then God says to Jeremiah in, in verse 4, And I will set up shepherds over them which will or which shall feed them, and they shall fear no more, nor be dismayed, neither shall they be uh, lacking, saith the Lord. And then five, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper and execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Anytime you see something in Scripture that's all in caps, you know that it's speaking of uh, God or Christ. That's all in, in caps there, the Lord our righteousness, the foretelling of Jesus Christ coming and uh, making amends for these false prophets. Not making amends for them, but making amends for His Word and reestablishing His Word in the earth. Verse 7, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up, and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, and from all the countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. You know, Jeremiah lived in a time when there was just uh, very similar to today where there was just so many different people saying so many different things out there. I think of today and uh, uh, so many different uh, denominations and there are, you know, televangelists that are 
into visions and dreams and all kind of special revelations and the God and they'll tell you the Lord gave me this word or the Lord gave me that word or uh, you know we think of uh, Joseph Smith and his golden tablets we think of um, uh, some of these uh, just absolutely crazy uh, ministries that are out there that I remember here a while back there was the laughing ministry um, where people met in hundreds of thousands of people across the country got into laughing and you know, supposedly laughing in the spirit um, and so Jeremiah says in the in the ninth verse my heart within me is broken because of the prophets all of my bones shake I am like a drunken man not like a man whom wine hath overcome because of the but because of the Lord and because of the works of His holiness. For the land is full of adulterers, for because of swearing the land mourneth, the pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and their course is evil, and their force is not right. Uh, reminds me of a, a situation where we, I was recently in a meeting where a gentleman ran a uh, call center and he was just full of vile cursings and swearings and every other word was a terrible word that he uttered out of his mouth. And then uh, after I got to talking with him, he his main focus or, menace, or his main per point of his business where he made all of his money, he worked for the Billy Graham Association, and he said they made more money. He would go and before Billy Graham would move into a city, he would do all their calling. And he also worked for uh, uh, Concerned Women for America as well, and did calling for them. And I just thought, you know, what a representation for supposedly a Christian organization. That your mouth uh, needs to be stopped. Uh, verse 11, For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. Wherefore their ways shall be unto them as slippery songs, ways in the darkness. They shall be driven on and fall therein, for I will bring evil upon them, even the year of their visitation, saith the Lord. You know, there's a lot of people out there that says, uh, you know, uh, God would never bring evil on anyone, I, especially during the uh, uh, New Orleans uh, hurricane area. Uh, there was so many preachers out there saying that my God would never do this. My God would never uh, do this. Well, here he says that I will bring evil upon them. And there's a place in Amos, I think, that says, that, Is there evil in the city, and the Lord hath, done, hath not done it? God is over evil. God is sovereign over evil. And He uses these catastrophes. He uses these plagues. We see all the plagues that He brought on Pharaoh. Um, and He does it to glorify Himself and bring about His purposes. Uh, verse 13, And I have seen folly in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. I think about some of the things that have been said by people like Joel Osteen. I don't, he said, Joel Osteen says, I don't talk about sin. Um, I talk about the love of God. Well, first of all, God tells us to exhort with all long suffering and doctrine, to rebuke, to exhort. And uh, God's law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. And the problem is people are not hearing the law of God today. In the Old Testament, they would get up and they would read the, the law of God to the people. And they would talk about his cursings and his blessings. 
His cursings if they disregarded His law and His blessings if they obeyed His law. But Joel Osteen says, no, I'm not going to talk about sin. I'm going to talk about God's love. And uh, Dr. Schuler, you know, on his, you know, Dr. Doctor, uh, on his program, he'll get up and talk about, you know, uh, possibility thinking. He doesn't talk about the depravity of man. And then we'll see someone like Oral Roberts get up and talk about, you know, putting your hand on the radio or on the television as a point of contact to God. Give me a break. Chapter 14 says, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen also the hand of evildoers that none doeth. None doth return from his wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom, and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah, or Robert's son, on wor worldwide national TV, you know, talked about his inability to get along with his first wife. He slept with her off and then found another wife. And here he is at the central stage of supposedly being in Christian leadership. And uh, here, Jeremiah says they commit adultery and walk in lies. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts concerning the prophets, Behold, I will feed them with wormwood and make them drink the water of gall. For from the prophets of Jerusalem is profaneness gone forth into all the land. Thinking about Paul and Jan Crouch and their 5,000 TV network. Some of the people they have on there, like Benny Hinn, who, who waves across the audience and people fall down under, uh, are slain, supposedly slain in the spirit. And uh, all these people line up to supposedly get healings. And uh, it's it's a sad time that we're living in in our society when you have Billy Graham uh, in Schuler's church talking about the fact that Christ a person doesn't have to know Christ to to get into the realm of glory. God loves everybody, and and uh, pretty much that we're all serving the same God. Verse 16, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart, not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, you know, recently Schuler was talking about the Bible. Someone asked him about the Bible and said, you know, there's a lot of things in the Bible that a lot of people don't like. He said, look, you have to learn to read the Bible. It's kind of like eating fish. If you get a bone, you spit the bone out. Any parts of the Bible that are offensive to you or whatever, just spit it out. Get rid of it. It kind of reminds me of a saying that I know a gentleman used to use all the time. Take the best and leave the rest. So any, anything in the Bible that's palatable to you, take that. But anything that is offensive or might expose your sin, spit it out like you're eating fish. But the Lord says, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy in you. They make you vain. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me, the Lord has said, You shall have peace. And they say unto every man that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. You know, Schuler in, in many of his books say that, you know, uh, you can just uh, bring into your own world whatever you want. You know, if you, uh, if you visualize, get into visualization, and you get into self-actualization, uh, you can uh, determine your own destiny. And God says here that this is this is imagination of their own heart. 
Um, verse 18, For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord? Who has perceived? Who has marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a, gr a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. And then God says to Jeremiah in verse 21, I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned from their evil way and from the evil of their, de of their doings. If Schuler had uh, was a true prophet, he would be up telling people to repent or they would all likewise perish. Not that God loves everybody. Verse 23, Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God far, uh, far off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord? I have heard what the prophets said, that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Uh, you know, uh, Oral Roberts talked about how that God had told him to go out and start that hospital out there in Oklahoma. And, you know, God showed him this. And then he had to end up, uh, it, it failed. He couldn't even uh, raise the money for it. And it ended up not ever happening after begging for all of that money and saying on national TV that God told him to tell everybody to send him a million dollars. Blah, 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 you know. Verse 26, How long shall this be in the house of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophets that hath a dream, let him tell a dream. And he that hath my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the chaff to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces? It kind of reminds me of that passage in Corinthians where it's talking about those that are um, babbling in unknown languages. And he says, isn't it better to speak... Uh, a few words and speak thousands of words that people can't understand? Well, why are we speaking these special revelation dreams when we have the Word of God? Revelation says not to add to or take away from the Word of God, and there's a judgment attached to that. And um, here, God's saying through Jeremiah, My, is not my word like as a fire? Verse 30, Therefore, behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that use their tongues and say, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and you tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies, and by their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them, therefore they shall not profit the people at all, saith the Lord. Now we see on TV, we've got all these Christian comedians. Make the people laugh. There's nothing holy anymore. Uh, we were recently at a... Uh, gathering where people were mocking the Bible and we uh, this was a family reunion kind of a thing people were making fun of the King James Version of the Bible and uh, you know 
Verse 32, Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith the Lord, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by, by their lies and their lightness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore shall they not profit this people at all, saith the Lord. And when this people, or the prophet, or a priest, shall ask thee, saying, What is the burden of the Lord? Thou shalt then say unto them, What burden? I will even forsake you, saith the Lord. And as for the prophet and the priest of the people, that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man and his house. When we saw the 9-11, it was really a farce. Billy Graham up there in that Episcopal church with the Bushes and Clintons all in the same building. A lot of people don't know, but that Episcopal church that Bush was up playing preacher after the 9-11 saying that no man can separate us from the love of God, they ordain homosexuals and women in that church, in the Episcopal Church. In fact, one of the priests in that church, I understand, has been involved in a homosexual union with another um, uh, with another homosexual. And we're going to get up and proclaim that, that uh, nothing can separate us from the love of God. That passage, by the way, in Romans that he, Bush was referring to, was specific to God's elect, not to people that are living in open uh, perversion. Okay. And uh, so we go on, and it says in the 34th verse, And as for the prophet and the priest and the people that shall say, The burden of the Lord, I will even punish that man in his house. Thus shall ye say, every one to his neighbor, and every one to his brother, What hath the Lord answered? And what hath the Lord spoken? And the burden of the Lord shall ye mention no more, for every man's word shall be his burden. For ye have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts our God. Thus shalt thou say to the prophet, What hath the Lord answered thee? And what hath the Lord spoken? But since ye say the burden of the Lord, therefore thus saith the Lord, because ye say this word, the burden of the Lord, and I have sent you saying, ye shall not say the burden of the Lord, therefore, behold, I, even I, will utterly forget you, and I will forsake you in the city I gave you and your fathers, and cast you out of my presence. How many times have we heard people get up saying, God's given me a burden, a real burden, for this situation or a burden for that situation. God hasn't given anyone a burden that's going blatantly against his word. Verse 40, And I will bring an everlasting reproach upon you and a perpetual shame which shall not be forgotten. So we see in this chapter that Jeremiah had to deal with a lot of false prophets like we're having to deal with today. We're, we we can just look at these. I heard a sermon by Adrian Rogers mocking God in the, uh, regarding the ninth chapter of Romans. Literally mocking God. Laughing at God. Uh, saying, you know, my God, would people interpret that God is uh, going to create vessels of wrath. Huh. My God would never do that. Well, you know what? Adrian's gone now, and I'm sure he's discovered what God can and will do. God will do what he says he will do in his word. And we have other people out there in our society who want to proclaim things that are just not according to the Bible. When you have someone get up and, and make these proclamations and they try to bring everybody together under one umbrella, the ecumenical movement, the National Council of Churches, now trying to... We've got Pat Robertson and uh, we've got uh, people that are trying to bring the Catholics together with the Christians and all, call them Christians. 
Catholic's not a Christian religion. Roman Catholicism is a is a debauched system we see where the priests have uh, molested, sexually molested hundreds of thousands of boys. And we there's a long history in the Roman Catholic Church of nuns being molested by priests. It's a system of absolute uh, debauchery. We see that Rome has been involved in, in image worship, in Mariolatry, praying to Mary, praying to dead saints. We see uh, they have placed the priest in a replacing Christ, going to confess to a priest. There's only one mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. So the Roman Catholic Church is not Christian. They're not a Christian religion. They are a false religion. The Pope, you know, if you read back in Calvin and Luther and some of the old writers, they called it the Antichrist, the beast, the beast. And so, you know, now we're going to, you know, all unify under some moral code, you know, like uh, going against abortion or something like that, and we can all unify around common grounds. No, we cannot. The Bible says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. I will not honor the unclean thing. Here you're going to go out and join hands with someone against abortion, a group that has a, a, a history of perversion, of, of abusing boys within their within their group. So our society is really becoming a, a futile mess because of these prophets who have prophesied wrong things, that have given people just totally misinformation. That goes as well for those that are in the Armenian camp that are telling everybody that Jesus died for everybody when the Bible is very clear that Jesus gave his life a ransom for many. And um, and uh, if, if Jesus Christ had died for everybody, everybody would be saved because God does not send his son to die uh, and perform a work that he does not accomplish. He's the author and finisher of our faith. So, anyway, I wanted to just go through that, and I would recommend everyone that hears this lesson uh, to uh, to read the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah prayerfully and examine if the person that you're sitting under at your church is preaching lies. And if they are, I would admonish you to get out away from that person and that organization ASAP and seek the Lord's face. Father, we pray that you would examine our hearts and examine what we're accepting into our minds and into our hearts, examining whose teaching we are under and make certain that uh, we are uh, making sure that we're worshiping the one and only true God and not prophets that are prophesying falsely. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen.